Hey, praise God. It is Brother Clinton once again, and you are back on the Word Prophet channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth, as Jesus Christ commanded. Yes, folks, it's just that simple. Read the Word of God and do what it says, and you will be blessed. Praise God. A brother wrote to me today, and he asked me, Brother Clinton, why does Jesus say that he had glory with the Father before the world was? This is written in John 17, 5, and it is a very frequently asked question um, that I get. And a lot of times when people ask me that question, they don't ask it in seriousness. They ask it in sarcasm because they think that I won't have an answer for it for some reason. Because people have been raised up in a Catholic world today. All of us were raised up in a Catholic world. And, and all of us were taught from our youth that God is a trinity of persons. And because of that, people are very confused and they don't know who Jesus Christ is in the churches. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. It doesn't say that Jesus Christ is God the Son. The Bible says the Word was God. The Bible doesn't say the Word was Christ. The Bible doesn't say the Word was Jesus. The Bible doesn't say the Word was the Son of God. The Bible says the Word was God. And the Bible says, to us there is but one God, the Father. Praise the Lord. So the Word, as it is written in John 1, uh, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, the Word with a capital W is God. It is the Word of God. It's the Word that's come forth from God's mouth by which He has created all things. Um, the Word of God isn't the Son of God. And if you'd like to know more about that, please leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll be happy to refer you to a video message that will show you from the Scripture who the Son of God is. And I know that seems like a kind of a redundant subject, but it's really not because unfortunately most people, the vast majority of people in the churches, don't know who the Son of God is, or even what the phrase Son of God means. And it's really not hard. It's, you know, we use those words in English all the time in other contexts, Son, of, and God, those three words. We use those words a lot in you know, daily conversation, and we know what they mean, but somehow when we come to the Bible, Rome has taught us to imagine that they mean things that they don't say. And for that reason, many people, many people are very confused, as was I until I came to the Lord Jesus Christ and began to seek Him in His Word. So what I want to talk to you about today is John 17, 5. So if we just turn in our Holy Bible, King James Version, to John 17, 5. And I, I, didn't, I don't have an outline for this video, but I have three verses of Scripture in mind that I want to share with you. One is in John chapter 17, the other one is in Romans chapter 8, and the other one is in 1 Peter chapter 1. Okay. So in John 17, 5, Jesus is praying. Jesus was praying on the night that he was betrayed, and he was praying the only time that we have a record of in the Bible that he ever prayed with his disciples or in the presence of his disciples. Every other time than that, he, pardon me, I live right next to the street, and there's a big truck rolling by. Um, this is the only time that we have a record of in the Scripture that Jesus Christ prayed with his disciples or in the presence of his disciples every other time he went and prayed by himself. But on this particular occasion, he prayed in front of them so that they could hear what he was saying. And he said in verse 5, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Praise the Lord. This is a very simple statement. It means exactly what it means. Uh, pardon me. It means exactly what it says. Um, it's not a theological code to be figured out. And it has nothing to do with any trinity of gods. It is a simple statement by the Son of God, um, whereby he is professing before his Father that he knows and understands that he was preordained before the foundation of the world, just like you and I were if you're a Christian. Now, in a lot of you, there are some, there are some little flags going up, and your antennas are going up, and you're going, uh-oh, uh-oh, predestination, cannot compute, cannot compute. Well, predestination is a biblical doctrine, okay? The, that which the Calvinists call predestination is a ridiculous antichrist doctrine that has nothing to do with the scripture where that, whereby they take a couple of verses of the scripture and they go run with it and they make up a doctrine that has nothing to do with the scripture at all. But the actual biblical doctrine of predestination, the fact that God has known his people since before the foundation of the world is a biblical doctrine. Okay, that's a biblical doctrine. And there's a video on this channel, I believe, that is called Predestination. So if you'd like to see that, you're welcome to just you know, either write me a comment and I'll send you a link to it, or just do a Google search, the Word Prophet channel, YouTube, Predestination, and it'll pop right up there for you. So let's go from here to 1 Peter chapter 1, because I want to show you something that Peter, the Apostle of Jesus Christ, wrote by the Holy Ghost 
about the Son of God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in verse 20, but I want to start a little back. I want to back up a little bit so that we can get a little bit of the context. So let's, um, let's start in verse 17, 1 Peter 1, 17 through 20. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth, accordeth, judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear, forasmuch as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Praise the Lord. He was foreordained before the foundation of the world. What does this mean? It means that God, the Almighty God, knew His Son, Jesus Christ, before the world was. Before His Son was ever formed in the womb, He knew Him. Okay? Just like God said to Jeremiah, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Okay, that's in the first chapter of Jeremiah. I believe it's in verse 5. Let me just check real quick to make sure I, I'm not giving you the wrong address. Yes, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So, did Jeremiah exist before he was formed in the womb? No, of course not. To assume that he existed before he was formed in the womb would be a ridiculous notion. But yet God knew him before he formed him in the belly. Why? Because we were preordained. Okay, I know I said three verses of scripture, but... Um, that's because I didn't have this planned out. I just prayed about it and turned on the camera. So there's going to be a couple more than three verses of Scripture here. But I want to go, before we go to Romans chapter 8, I want to take you to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, um, starting with verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who ha I just want to say something right here for a moment. I, I hesitated, but I, I need to say this. When we say, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that's what we mean. There's a lot of people out there that are taught to say, blessed be, blessed be, but they don't say who it is that be blessed. Avoid that and avoid those people, because that is a form of witchcraft. That comes from witchcraft. When they say, blessed be, but they don't say who they're blessing, the reason that they're saying it that way is because they're blessing Satan, and it's an occult practice. Um, that's a, a common practice of witches and warlocks. They say, blessed be, but then they don't say who they're blessing, and they want you to think that they are talking about your God, when in fact they are talking about their God, and they just don't say that. So when we say, blessed be, let us always finish by saying, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that way it's very clear who is being spoken of. Praise God. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Can anybody say amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him, in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Comma, and I won't continue because... Verse 4 and 5 is what I want to talk to you about. According as he, God, hath chosen us in him, the Son of God, before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world. Before God created the earth and the worlds, he, he had ordained ahead of time you and me, those of us who are in Jesus Christ. God knew us before he formed us in the belly. He knew us before the foundation of the world. Did we exist before the foundation of the world? No, of course not. Of course not. Did Jesus Christ, the Son of God, exist before the foundation of the world? Of course not. He was made of a woman, made under the law. 2,000 years ago, he was formed in the belly of a woman. And he was conceived in the womb and he was born. Okay? So Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Son of God, didn't exist before the foundation of the world. But Brother Clinton, he had glory with his Father before the foundation of the world. Yes, indeed, and I'm going to tell you something very profound and very simple, and that will probably shock you. So did we. So did we. What do you mean, so did we, Brother Clinton? The Son of God, Jesus Christ, had glory with his Father before the foundation of the world. 
so did we. So did you and I, my brother and my sister. And you're like, ah, what are you talking about, Brother Clinton? We had glory with, with God before the foundation of the world, but we didn't exist before the foundation of the world. We didn't exist until we were formed in the womb. Yes, that's what the Bible says, my brother, my sister. Show me that in the scripture, Brother Clinton. Let's go to Romans. Pardon me for just involving you in a conversation between you and me without your permission, but, but I perceive that many of you are, are speaking these things, and so I want to answer these questions. And Romans chapter 8, pardon me, I'm in 1 Corinthians, that won't work. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8, in the latter part of the chapter, we are very quick in the churches to quote Romans 8.28, and that's wonderful, it's the truth. Let's start there. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are the called according to his purpose. Okay? Why do we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are the called according to his purpose? Well, let's continue reading. For whom he did foreknow. What does foreknow mean? It means to know someone before they existed. Right? For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate predestinate, okay, to be conformed to the image of his Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Praise the Lord. Now, I won't get into a lot of detail about the, the term firstborn here, but of the, of, the, of the truth, Jesus Christ is the firstborn among many brethren because he is the firstborn from the dead. Although he's not necessarily the one who was born first because Abraham was born before Jesus Christ, and yet Jesus Christ said before Abraham was, I am. Why did Jesus Christ say that? Because he is the living God, the almighty God, the father, the maker of Abraham, who was manifest in the flesh. And the flesh that he was manifest in is his son, who is also called Jesus Christ, because he's got his name from inheritance by his father. Pardon me, because he got his name by inheritance from his father. Okay, because Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4 says, The Son of God obtained by inheritance a more excellent name than the angels. Okay, the name that he received that is more excellent than the angels is Jesus. And he received that name Jesus by inheritance. By inheritance from whom? By inheritance from his Father. This is why Jesus said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost is Jesus Christ. And the apostles knew that. That's why they went forth and they preached, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Are, are, are the dots connecting for you? Blessed be the name of the Lord. So let's go back to Romans 8, 29. For whom he did foreknow, we're talking about why all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. That's what we're talking about here. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, we're going on now because you asked me in our pretend conversation, you asked me, Brother Clinton, why do you say that we had glory with the Father before, before the foundation of the world? We know Jesus, our Lord, had glory with his Father before the foundation of the world. But you, Brother Clinton, are saying that we, Christians, had glory with our Father before the foundation of the world. Where is that in the Scripture? Romans 8, 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. All right. Now, it doesn't say whom he predestinated, then he also will call. It says, then he also called. This is past tense, right? This is all past tense. Moreover, whom he did predestinate in the past, did predestinate, then he also called, past tense. Okay, and remember Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen, right? And whom he called, then he also justified. Past tense, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. Then he also glorified. This is something that took place in the past. Okay, now let's read verse 30 again. 
Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. The Bible says that the Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. The Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the world. Was the Lamb of God slain twice? Once before the foundation of the world and then once again 2,000 years ago? No, of course not. And to assume such a thing would be ridiculous. But yet the Bible says that Jesus Christ was slain right outside of Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. And the Bible also says that the Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ, of course, was slain before the foundation of the world. So which is it? Well, it's, it's both. Because it was done before it started. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And before the foundation of the world, that which would come forth in the Word of God had already been predestined to come to pass. Whatever you're doing right now, whatever you were doing before you turned on this video, it wasn't a surprise to God. He knew about it before the foundation of the world. That doesn't mean that, that you have no choice and God's just going to make you do whatever he wants you to do. But it does mean that God has known before the foundation of the world exactly what you were going to do. He has known since before the world was if you were going to obey him or not obey him. God knows right now whether or not you are going to make it to the end of this race and enter into his kingdom. You don't know that. You have the hope in the word of God of that. And if you continue in the word of God, then you do know that you will inherit the kingdom of God. But you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. God does. See, that's why the song says, I know he holds tomorrow. Because I know he holds tomorrow. Hallelujah. It's, a, it's in a song called Because He Lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds tomorrow and life is living. Pardon me, and life is worth the living just because he lives. Praise the Lord. See, God knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He has known before the foundation of the world what's going to happen tomorrow and all the way up until the end of time. And God has known his own people since before the foundation of the world. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, was foreordained before the foundation of the world. He didn't exist before the foundation of the world. Neither did you or I exist before the foundation of the world. Neither did Jeremiah the prophet exist before the foundation of the world. But God knew us before the world was. Before he made anything, he knew his people. And he has glorified his people. And that, that's what Jesus Christ was proclaiming in John chapter 17, verse 5. He was proclaiming in the sight of God and in the presence of his disciples, the reality that he was known of his Father, the God that he was praying to, before the foundation of the world, and that he knew that he belonged to his Father. There was no doubt in his mind. See, he didn't have a form of religion that some man in a costume taught to him. He believed the Word of God that he read in the Scriptures, the Word of God that was verily in him and speaking through him to the people of Israel. And because he believed that word, he knew that he had been foreordained before the foundation of the world, and that even though he had to face the cross, it was already done before it started. And it was just something that he had to go through in order to get to the other side. And for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. And so must we. And so those of us who are going to be in eternity in the kingdom of the living God, with our God, we have been foreordained since before the foundation of the world. And we have had glory with our Father before the foundation of the world. Those of us who will be with him in glory in the future already had that glory with him before anything was ever made. We didn't exist at the time, but God knew us. And that is the revelation of John, chapter 17, verse 5. May this be a blessing to those of you who have ears to hear. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.